The planet Mars is usually referred to as the red planet, and a majority of the surface is in fact a reddish orangish color. However, there are two locations that distinctly stand out from this typical surface, these being the northern and southern poles, having these unique ice caps on the terrestrial planet Mars. So in this video, we will be talking about those ice caps, looking at what they're made up of, how do they change over time, and answering the questions, are Mars's ice caps actually melting? Let's talk about that. In order to understand how the ice caps change over time, we must first take a look at the composition or what these ice caps are actually made up of. And as you can probably imagine, the ice caps are made up of, well, ice and dry ice. And ice is just frozen water or frozen H2O, and dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. Now it's very interesting because here on Earth, carbon dioxide exists naturally as a gas in our atmosphere. However, on Mars, carbon dioxide can exist as both a gas and a solid. But we'll get to that in just a little bit. Scientists, though, believe that a majority of the ice caps are made up of normal ice, so frozen water, and the fact that the dry ice actually ends up changing quite a bit depending on the season. Now hold up a second. Does Mars actually have seasons? What does it need to have a season? Both Earth and Mars have an axial tilt with respect to their orbit around the Sun. Earth has an axial tilt of 23 and a half degrees, and Mars has an axial tilt of 25 degrees. Therefore, you would probably predict that both Earth and Mars undergo very similar seasons. However, Mars's seasonal patterns are a little bit more complicated than ours here on Earth. And if you want me to cover that in a different video, let me know in the comments down below and I'd love to do that. However, the main point we want to get out of this is that both Earth and Mars experience summers and winters in their northern or southern hemispheres. Therefore, we're going to see a lot of variation in temperature depending on if you're on the north or southern pole. So what does that mean? In order to understand this, let's go through a very quick scenario. Imagining that we're on the North Pole of Mars during a northern winter. Essentially, what this would mean is that the North Pole itself would be experiencing a very long night, similar to what we see in the polar regions here on Earth. However, because of this, since it's not exposed to sunlight, the temperature drops very far. In fact, it can drop anywhere to negative 140 to negative 150 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold. And it turns out at this temperature, carbon dioxide can exist as a solid, therefore creating dry ice. However, as the winter starts to end and it becomes spring, the temperature will slowly become warmer and warmer as the North Pole is starting to be exposed to the sun more and more. And as the temperature at the North Pole actually increases, it will pass a certain threshold, which is around a negative 125 degrees Celsius. Once it gets past this threshold, the dry ice on the North Pole is going to start sublimating. But one second, what is sublimating? Essentially, sublimating is when it goes from a solid directly to a gas. Typically, when you think of something like water, you have ice, and then the ice goes to a liquid, and then the liquid goes to a gas. However, depending on a combination of pressures and temperatures, you can actually go directly from a solid to a gas, and that term is called sublimating. So in this case, when the carbon dioxide goes from colder than negative 125 degrees Celsius to warmer than negative 125 degrees Celsius, it will sublimate, meaning it will go from this dry ice state directly to a gaseous state. So essentially, what we would expect to see is the northern pole or the northern ice cap to change in size greatly depending on whether or not it's summer or winter. And because of this, we can actually see a lot of changes happening on Mars. So in this scenario, when it goes from winter to spring to summer in the northern hemisphere, essentially we will see all the dry ice or a majority of the dry ice sublimating into the atmosphere, which means that it ends up losing about one to two meters of thickness off of the polar ice cap itself. However, when it's summer in the northern hemisphere, that means it's winter in the southern hemisphere. 
So essentially what we see happening is a lot of this dry ice starts melting in the North Pole and then the opposite occurs in the South Pole where it starts to freeze and accumulate down there. Therefore, we have this cycle, depending on the seasons, of where the dry ice is on Mars. It actually gets more interesting than this, because Mars' atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. And as I mentioned previously, dry ice is just solid carbon dioxide. Therefore, this process plays a major role in the climate of Mars. It turns out that around 3 to 4 trillion tons of carbon dioxide are involved in this process every single year, which is 12 to 16 percent of Mars's entire atmosphere. So 12 to 16 percent of its entire atmosphere is being frozen and then sublimated every single summer and every single winter, which is remarkable to think about. However, that just goes to show how truly interesting this cycle is on the red planet. And this animation put together by NASA is truly fascinating and shows just how much these ice caps are changing over time. But now we can look at the ice caps themselves and learn a little bit more about their structure and what impact they play on the planet as a whole. Starting with the northern ice cap. It turns out that on average it rises about 2 kilometers above the local plains surrounding it in a dome-like shape. And it's about 1,000 kilometers in diameter. Therefore, this is a relatively large part of the planet Mars. And it's very interesting to see truly how much ice is actually there. Now the ice cap on the south pole of Mars is actually much smaller, being only 400 kilometers in diameter and having a thickness of around 3 kilometers. Therefore, it's interesting to note that these are two pretty different sizes in terms of their ice caps. However, to continue on, if we take a look at images of both the ice caps, we notice something very interesting. They have this spiral-like shape. What's causing this? That almost looks like it would be a cloud or a hurricane here on Earth. So what is going on? It turns out that this spiral-like shape is actually carved from many years of winds caused by the Coriolis effect. So essentially, over time, these winds basically eroded away the ice, creating these large caverns or valleys within the ice itself. Now the structure of these ice caps, as I mentioned previously, are like dome-like shapes. Essentially, these large structures that are on the northern and southern poles. And it's interesting because you may imagine that they would want to spread out like glaciers over time. However, due to the fact that it's much colder on Mars, this makes the ice or water ice a lot more rigid. Therefore, it acts much more like a stone than maybe a glacier that you would imagine here on Earth. So it's predicted that this ice moves about one millimeter per year on Mars, whereas here on Earth, glaciers usually move at about one to 10 meters. So it's quite a large difference and that mainly has to do with the difference in temperature between what we see here on Earth and what we see on Mars. But with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video about the ice caps on Mars, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.